Such a historic day we have here today. No, it's not the fact that I'm back on YouTube, even though, thank you. No, we have our very first ever female, female, very important word here, four-star admiral, the wonderful, the talented, the definitely not grandma killer, Rachel Levine. Yeah, you you remember her. Her, right? Her, the one who was uh, being held up as being such another, uh, such a groundbreaker in January as well, when uh, she was appointed as the very first ever transgender appointee to the Department of Health. Okay, Biden administration's Department of Health and Human Services on Tuesday publicly announced that Rachel Levine, the transgender assistant secretary of health for HHS, had been named the nation's first openly transgender first or first ever four-star officer across any of the eight uniformed services of the United States. How wonderful. You have how many crises, but then at the same time, you can just go ahead and point, look at how many people of color, women, and LGBTQ plus people that we have in our cabinet. Isn't it great? And aren't they all failing at different levels? It's so wonderful, right? Diversity is in fact our strength. According to the press release, this makes Levine a biological male, yep, the highest ranking official in the United States uh, public health sector commissioned for and the first ever female four-star admiral. You can go ahead and make your own jokes as appropriately, but now we got to talk about some more just the government insanity, right? Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and jump right back into the fire. So I don't know if this one's going to be up, but we'll be able to talk about Canada next. And uh, you guys probably watched the previous video as well. So uh, doctors can prescribe ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine off-label uh, for COVID, uh, according to the Nebraska Attorney General. Okay. Yeah, just ask Joe Rogan. That's what his doctor fucking gave him. We've known this. If that's what your doctor thinks is best for you, I don't know what all the problem is. Okay. Oh, right. They're cheap. Oh, and um, we got this new pill. Our America has this one pill coming out that's $712 that they're getting from the United States government that only costs $12 to manufacture. But meanwhile... um. You know, other stuff is not nearly as expensive, but um, yeah, no, this is all about your health, though. Uh, go ahead and get the jab. It's safe and effective. Uh, Nebraska Attorney General Doug Peterson issued a legal opinion saying that his office won't seek dis disciplinary action against doctors who prescribe hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin as off-label off sorry, medicines or to treat or prevent COVID-19 as long as they are not engaging in any misconduct. No shit. No shit, okay? What's the first line of the Hippocratic Oath? Okay, the one that the doctors all have to take in order to provide service to their patients. Shall not do no harm, right? Okay, there would be illegal malpractices out the wazoo if any of these treatments ended up, you know what, not helping out or okay, or even accelerating or exacerbating already existing symptoms. But the media would be running headfirst with those headlines but we don't really see them out there or maybe nobody's just taking this shit and all of this stuff is just a media concoction i don't really know don't really care either you should do whatever fucking makes you healthy how about that i've got some recommendations how about instead of having to rely on a bunch of fucking cocktails of drugs you just eat a balanced diet and you just get some exercise and you take care of yourself through proper sleep and proper routine. How about that? I don't know. That's pretty cheap and pretty effective and that's guaranteed to work on pretty much everything I can think of, but don't worry about it. Uh, the government's got your back or in fact, they have your arm and they want it forever, but they've got justification for this. Okay. Cause Saki justifies vaccine mandates stating COVID was the leading cause of death among cops last year. That is wrong. That is wrong. She's wrong. But hey, let's go and see what uh, the little commie that could had to say. As protests against Biden's administration's vaccine mandate heat up across the country, go ahead and point to the part in OSHA where you can go ahead and enforce these vaccine mandates. Oh, wait, you still can't? And we're like months after your announcement? Okay. No, with officers, teachers, and firefighters walking off the job, as well as reports of or from military personnel that they are leaving the force rather than submit. Yay! 3,200 police officers in Chicago alone are defying vaccine mandates, by the way. I uh, talked about that yesterday in a video you can find over on Rumble or Odyssey or The Moon. I don't fucking know. 
but I covered it yesterday. When we were in the clink. If the whole point of the vaccine mandate is to make people safer, Fox News is Peter Doocy, like the one of the only people who pushes back against Saki's insanity, asked, uh, but a vaccine mandate also means tons of police and military may walk off the job. Then, at the end of the day, does a vaccine mandate make people safer? Oh, wow. Okay. I, we already know where she's going to end up by saying that COVID killed more police officers than anything else. But let's see how she gets there because that's pretty direct. That's kind of straight to the point. So, well, there's tons of police and military walking off the job. I love lamp. What the fuck? Hundreds of thousands of U.S. service members remain unvaccinated, which is leading to questions about possible military readiness. Very much so. I've talked about that yesterday as well. I think it was yesterday. I don't remember. Uh, the L.A. County Sheriff said that 5 to 10% of the workforce could walk off the job. And he's also not enforcing the vaccine mandate because that sheriff in L.A. County is fucking based. He's like the one good official left in California. Godspeed. Is there any concern about that? Ducey asked. Well, I would, I would, I would, I would, how about, how about, how about, I had not and, uh, say what uh, we point to, Saki said, or, or what I would, I would point to you with the evidence, with the, with, with, with the rage, rage of companies and you're being mean and sexist. Stop asking these tough questions. Organizations, frankly, the Department of Defense can also give you uh, 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 up to date statistics on members of the military. I believe it's, it's over 90%, but, but uh, hey, hey, bitch, uh, that still means there's 10% like he was talking about that aren't vaccinated that would end up walking off. So, there are other problems in the world other than COVID-19. Ducey cited international terror, gang violence, murder, arson, drug dealing. Is there any concern? What was the highest? Uh -huh. What was the number one cause of death by police officers last year? Do you know? COVID-19. It was, it was the coof. Okay, everything's a coof. It's always going to be the coof. That's something we're working to address and the police departments are working to address. If you if you look at Seattle as an example, oh, don't look at Seattle. You shouldn't be pulling that up. You should be fucking pulling your fucking imaginary hat over your eyes in order to just cover up by the fact that you're bringing up Seattle in any context when it comes to police and military violence. Just go ahead and fucking pump the brakes on this one, stupid. As an example, which I, which I have has been in the, the reporting, obviously. God, you can just, even the reading, you can just hear the flop sweat dropping. And 92% of the police force is vaccinated, as are 93% of the firefighters, 99% of Seattle's 11,000 employees have submitted vaccine verification or an attempted or an exemption request big fucking difference there 99% have submitted the vaccine verification or asked for an exemption so what are the actual numbers or are you just going to blame things on this big nebulous oh it's always the coof or whatever we do whenever we fuck up it's either orange man or it's the, or it's the thing that we were actually uh, you know campaigning on is having a plan to stop god you suck but here's the receipts. According to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, 185 police officers in the United States died as a cause of COVID-19 in 2020. Out of this, some 700,000 police officers cur currently working in the United States, 295 officers died in total, with the nearest cause of fatality uh, being that they were shot. Okay, so 185 officers died with or of the coof, but most of them were shot. All right, but don't worry, Biden's got that uh, unlocked too. There's plenty of gun control bills that are currently in Congress, so don't worry about that one. But now we got this young Chad right here. Okay, Jonathan Isaac, right? He's one of the few, and uh, Kyrie Irving as well of the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, he's away. Uh, he's been banned. He's been banned from being with the Nets. Okay, until he submits to get the jab. And uh, so far, he's just been like, "No, that's all right. I'm cool. I still got fucking millions and millions of dollars." So you guys go ahead and I'll wait this one out. And I'm not compromising my principles, which is laudable. Okay, I'm not really a big Kyrie Irving fan because his past is sketchier than a Jackson, Pol or Jackson Pollock painting. But Isaac here of the magic, um, he was the one dude, okay, during the insanity of the, uh, what was that, 2019-2020 NBA season getting wrapped up at Disney World when everybody was bedecked and all the social justice garb and they had fucking Black Lives Matter on the court. He was the one cat who would not put on the t-shirt and he would not kneel for the national anthem. So he's an awesome dude. And he's been pilloried and 
painted as being anti-vaccine out there but he's just given the same old answer it's like i did my research and um i've recovered from it and i don't want to get it and i live in florida which is great which is one of the few free please few free places left my mistake but he has some uh, spicy takes on the vaccine mandate a blatant miscarriage of information by the media has turned this thing so sour yep my position hasn't changed on it if you want it go get it and if not okay cool whatever let's just open up society okay i like the jordan peterson approach where it's like okay uh here's the date we're opening everything back up plan accordingly good good should have done that months ago about 19 of those months ago in fact but let's see what this good soldier has to say monday on fox news channels uh, fox news primetime orlando magic power forward jonathan isaac hit back against the media for pushing the coronavirus vaccine mandate across the country and vilifying those who refuse to follow the mandate isaac said that the blatant miscarriage of information by the media has turned this thing so sour he highlighted the vitriol aimed at those who push back against the vaccine mandates uh, that is resulting in people losing their jobs. Yeah, one of the f uh, videos I did a couple of weeks ago, it had the, the four players of the NBA who have uh, been open at least or at least alluded to the fact that they aren't vaccinated. It was Isaac, it was Irving, it was Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards, who I haven't heard anything on about, but he had definitely not gotten the vax. And then there was Andrew Wiggins, who eventually had to cave to it, and he's like, I didn't want to get it, but I was going to end up forfeiting all of my fucking money for the season, and I'm not necessarily in a position to do it, okay? He was very, very upset that the fact of the matter is he didn't have a choice in the situation. Oh, he did. He did, he could have stood up for his principles, but say la vie wasn't my choice to make. But back to Isaac here. You know, a lot went into my decision for not deciding to get the vaccine. For starters, I have had COVID in the past. Hi. I've come to understand that our reactions as an immunity and natural Oh, as to immunity, a natural infection is robust and long lasting. True. And so I have that with my current physical fitness level and my age group, true. I don't feel I'm in the category of, you know, necessarily need the vaccine right now. The craziness and the vitriol going around, people losing their jobs, I feel there is a blatant miscarriage of information by the media that has turned this thing so sour. It's been politicized. And I see people, I'm standing with people who are deciding not to get on the backs of freedom. Hell yeah. I think that there are, in fact, a lot of people who have this position. There should be more people speaking up in order to just enlighten the people because there's so much, so many low information people out there who consistently think that if you catch this, it's practically a death sentence. It's not, okay? It's not. You know the numbers. It's more likely than not. You're going to be fine at the end of the day. Oh, but, but long COVID. And, oh, what about transmitting it to people? Then get the jab, okay? And fucking stay at home, okay? Wear nine fucking masks. I don't give a shit. Just don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to listen anyway, so go fuck your mother. Dan Bongino's trying to affect some change, okay? He's got like, what, the second or third most popular radio program in the world. And he owns, he pretty much runs Cumulus Media, by the way, uh, which is another one of the big radio companies that's out there. And they're trying to drop a vaccine mandate. Okay. And he obviously, because he has such a large platform and it is the biggest talk show on the platform. Didn't he take over for Rush? I think he did. Conservative radio host uh, Dan Bongino threatened his employer, Cumulus Media, with an on air ultimatum monday announcing that his program regarding the coronavirus vaccine mandate that you can't have both of us former new york police officer and secret service agents message pushed back on the media's covid19 vaccine mandate requirement you can have me or you can have the van or the vaccine mandate i was going to try to combine both of those words my eyes are loopy but you can't have both of us bongino said during his nationwide program I'm not letting this go, Bongino public or er, publicly declared in the pa in the post. Sorry, I'm not even considering letting go. I'm announcing it publicly, so you know I'm not letting it go. Just let it go. Let it go. If you get it, you get it. A third post noted that Bongino is personally vaccinated, 
but resists the vaccine mandate requirement for other employees who don't have a platform to fight back as they risk unemployment if they don't comply. Hell yeah. That's good, because it's not just going to stop with a fucking jab, okay? This shit is going to get extrapolated because they know how far you can push people, okay? This is the powers that be. This, these, this is the government, okay? They know how far you can push you. They know what buttons to push in order to make you do what they want you to do. I got way too much information over these past 20 fucking months, by the way. But to just end on another very, very good note, okay? Southwest Airlines, baby. Uh, Yep, they aren't going to be enforcing their vaccine mandate either. You love to see it, mostly because they kind of have legislative backing on this one because they are headquartered in Dallas, Texas, where there was a little protest that happened yesterday as well. And Greg Abbott, a few days ago, late last week, he signed an executive order into law that barred any company, any entity from enforcing a vaccine mandate. So Southwest always had that out there and then they finally took it. It's great. Southwest Airlines backs off plan to put unvaccinated employees on unpaid leave. Sweet. That's another way that these corporations are getting around it. Okay. Oh, we're not firing anybody. Oh, we're just uh, putting them on indefinite suspension without pay. So it's, it's kind of like firing, but you can't collect any benefits and you can't get paid for it. You just have to get the jab. But it's a choice, right? Southwest Airlines told its employees that it will delay a plan to place workers who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 on unpaid leave if they haven't yet obtained a medical or religious exemption. Keep pushing that back, fuckers. Because next time that you try it, Remember a couple of weeks ago when uh, thousands of flights got magically canceled for only one airline and nobody else? Yeah, that's going to become something that's going to be happening a lot more frequently, okay? Because, hey, we just told you how government has gotten a lot of information on what they can do in order to force you to do something that you don't necessarily want to do, but something that you think that you have to do. But that road flows two ways, okay? Because this right here, Bongino's ultimatum, if that works, and then you got Kyrie Irving, and you got Jonathan Isaacs in the NBA. If they hold the line, if they stay strong, some people cave, like Southwest Airlines did, gonna end up winning this. Hope it happens. I hope these people are men of convictions, because there's a lot of weak people in power, and as soon as you bend to these fucking sickos' wants and needs, their express needs, not their actual needs. They don't stop and they just keep taking and they keep taking and you got to tell them strongly, look them straight in the eye and tell them no and fucking mean it. And that's going to set us up for our next video where we got to talk about stupid Canada and all of our fucking weaknesses up here. So hang on tight, folks. Thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.